Joining me today over a coffee at the Office Cafe in Brussels, Maria Joao Rodriguez, Social Democrat, Vice President. We talk about the new Eurogroup President, the digital revolution, and building Europe's social pillar. The new Eurogroup President, it's a big win for Portugal, a big win for you as well. Are you pleased? Of course. It was a very long story. There are no miracles in uh, politics. So we worked so hard, first of all, to have a new way to deal with Eurozone issues. Because we believe that uh, we need to have uh, new bridges to overcome big divergences which were there. They started as uh, financial divergences, when uh, to invest in a country was much more expensive than invest in another country. Then uh, social divergences, when you have uh, unemployment rate at 40% in one region and 4% in another region, something is badly wrong. And then it became a kind of political divergence. It's very dangerous for the European Union as a whole. The so, new Eurogroup president is described as to the left of Dieselbaum. Do you think that's correct? Well, uh, he's a typical Portuguese in the sense that he can listen to uh, all sides of the problem and um, I'm sure that you play a very constructive role, but with a clear direction. And the clear direction is Eurozone is not only an area for stability, should be an area for growth and upward economic and social convergence. You know the man himself. He's a Harvard-trained uh, economist. He, what do we expect from him? What should we expect from him in terms of his handling that's going to be different this time? Well, he's certainly uh, very uh, well trained. Uh, is well equipped uh, to deal with technical discussions, but here what really matters is the political positioning. And I believe he has a good combination of uh, high level uh, qualification to deal with the issues, which are very complex, but also this capacity to listen to different sides of the, the round table to come with so new solutions. Is this the end of austerity or are we going to see a repackaging of austerity? Well, uh, it could prove uh, in the Portuguese uh, case that it is possible to start turning the page of austerity by bringing uh, growth back to a country while at the same time uh, completing uh, fiscal consolidation, uh, reducing the deficit and the debt. This is possible, but we are at the half of this task. Because uh, in order to complete the task, we need to change the way the economic and monetary union as a whole works. That's why the reform now coming is so important. And that's just one reform. You've spoken in the past about reforming Europe and what needs to be done for the future of Europe. What needs to be done? Well, I think the good starting point to reform Eurozone is uh, the European social pillar, which was uh, proclaimed uh, some weeks ago. And this is important because it is saying that all citizens in the European Union should count on updated social standards. Then, if this is to be true, we need to deliver on this. And this means to have um, the means to support uh, decent wages, good pensions, and most of all, create quality jobs. And investment is decisive, and that's why Eurozone needs to deliver this investment. And part of that policy must be the industrial strategy for Europe as well, the digital economy. What do you think is really critical to achieving this transformation? We have robots which are going to replace a lot of jobs, and most people don't seem to appreciate this, the speed at which that's going to happen. How does Europe deal with that? Well, we are certainly dealing with a new phase of the digital revolution, which is bringing a lot of uh, changes in the way we live and the way we work. And uh, we could um, basically have three choices. Either we say, we don't like this, let's stop. But frankly, this is impossible. Or we could say, let's accept as it is. I believe, as a social democrat, that we need to welcome uh, technological progress because this is improving uh, people's lives, but we need to frame it in such a way that we have uh, good working conditions. Uh, but these, these working conditions vary vastly across uh, Europe as well. 
again, we risk a divergence of, of economic conditions and this tension between the north and south, and even the east and west, as this, this moves forward. Does this risk destabilizing the European Union as a project if we don't get it right? Of course. We need uh, to come with uh, better solutions, and the better solutions they need European scale most of the time. Let me tell you. When it comes to the digital revolution, we have now many sectors being transformed by online platforms. Millions of people working for these online platforms. But if you want to avoid a race to the bottom of these people competing to each other, we need to define European basic rules, a level playing field. Uh, and I believe that everybody working for online platforms should count on two basic guarantees. One is um, a transparent and decent labor contract, and the second is full access to social protection. Even this is a, a self-employed or even this is a small entrepreneur. Why is it so difficult for you to get the message across at the moment? Socialist leader after socialist leader is finding it really tough to get through to the electorate. What's the hindrance? Because uh, social democrats need to update their agenda. When coping with the digital revolution, when coping with the new pressures coming from a global economy, when coping now with the pressure coming from the migration waves. So all, the, all these areas, uh, social democrats, they need to be vocal on uh, stronger solutions which require European scale. So uh, social democrats, they need to um, come up with stronger European solutions to lead pro-European progressive forces. Do you think also there's an issue of discipline? Many people, analysts I would speak to, they say that the, the centre-right has a much stronger party discipline uh, in Brussels and across Europe as well. Do you see this problem with the Social Democrats? Do you need a, a stronger sense of, of direction and discipline as a, as a working group? Well, I would say not, uh, discipline is not the, the, the most important thing. The most important thing is to agree on a common direction. I can tell you we were now together in Lisbon to define the common direction of this family. Uh, this remains a very important family if you combine the political weight we have in European Council, Council, European Parliament, national parliaments, local level, extremely important, and all our alliances with the stakeholders of the civil society. You like art, from what I understand as well. What kind of uh, art draws your attention most? I was uh, taking um, art courses. Hmm? And I was thinking about being architecture. Uh, and uh, now I'm being trying to make a kind of architecture in politics, this is in fact. <laughs> but um, just to give an example, uh, I believe that uh, art creation comes before all the other forms of creation, including in science and politics. Mm -hmm. And if I give an example, if you think about someone like Kandinsky, uh, and you put him in the historical context, you understand that he came before big revolutions in science and politics. And I believe that art is really the first way for humankind to invent something new. What do you think was new about Kandinsky? What did he lead with? Well, it's the capacity to think about um, eternity. So going beyond our references of time and space and creating um, new shapes, new relationships, a strong dynamics. Do you think your view of art informs your view of politics in terms of what's possible? whereas others would see a very practical reality in front of them and see the limitations of day-to-day -day business? No, absolutely it uh, influences. Because, let me give an, another example. Um, Picasso with the Cubist revolution is extremely important for politics because you have the same object but you can have different views of the same object depending on the perspective. 
And this is a decisive art to make politics, because you need to understand the others, and then to come with a possible compromise. If you write a book in the future, I'm guessing there's capacity to have a chapter on the art of politics or the architecture of politics <laughs> as well. Mary Joao Rodriguez, thank you. Thank you so much.